So I'm trying to understand risk neutral probabilities. So let's consider a really simple case where there's one asset S and it's at 100 now. And suppose there are just two cases. In the one case, it goes up to 110. It goes up here. And in the other case, it goes down to 90. Here it's going down. So let's call this A and B. And these transitions here will have different probabilities. So let's call that phi and one minus phi. So phi will depend on the behavior of S. And in particular, if S is log normal, then it'll depend on uh, mu, the drift. Okay, so that's our, our world. We just have two possibilities. Now we have a friend that offers to play a game with us. So our friend says, I'll give you $10 if A happens and nothing otherwise. And the question is, how much do we pay to play this game? How much do we pay to play? And so if you're thinking regular math and probabilities, you start looking and thinking, well, there's an expectation for how much we win. You start looking at fee. Well, let's try doing it a different way. Let's try taking a position. So our, let's call our position pi. And how much we pay to play, let's just call that v, some value. So where our position will be, we're playing the game, and we're going to short some quantity of the stock. So if a happens, pi 1, so this is 1 after the transition happens, we'll call over here pi 1 and over before the transition we'll call that pi 0. So after the transition pi 1 equals 10 minus delta times in A it's 110. And then in B we have pi 1 equals 0, so we didn't get the $10, minus delta times 90. Now we can do a little bit of math here. We can say 10 minus delta times 110 equals 0 minus delta times 90, and then solve for delta, and we get delta equals a half. So this is a, a choice for delta that means pi 1 has no uncertainty. So now we know that pi 1 equals negative uh, half times 90, and the important bit is there's no uncertainty. And then pi 0 is just v minus delta times s. So pi 0, s is 100. So 100. And here we also notice that there's v is just some you know value we're calculating. And this is no uncertainty, so no uncertainty. And when we have the position has no uncertainty at two different time steps, the no arbitrage principle implies that these have to be equal. So it implies that pi 0 equals pi 1. And so what does that mean? That means that v minus 50 equals negative 45. In other words, v equals 5. v equals 5. So what did we just do? We just showed that for this game where our friend offers to pay us $10 depending on if A or B happens, we just went through and made an argument that shows that we should be willing to pay $5 to play that game. And the interesting thing is that 
there's no fee. And that's sort of surprising because you'd think that this game, you know, sometimes you win, sometimes you don't win, and the chance that you win is related to fee, but the price you're willing to pay to play the game is not related to fee. So that's that's counterintuitive to me. And the reason is the no arbitrage principle. So because we can hedge the position of this game, so because we can make the outcome totally certain, the no arbitrage principle principle springs into action and you know forces a certain price on the the <laughs> the option or the the value of the game. So of course this all this notation is suggestive to to show that this is option pricing, but this isn't even an option price. This is like so simple. It's two states and a, and a probability going to the states. And even in this very simple situation, the no arbitrage argument, you know, forces a price on, on this game. So this is, this is pretty interesting. This is a good explanation about how the no arbitrage principle works with uh, probabilities. So you can't just use the raw probabilities to price games and options related to the underlying. You have to look at, you know, what the risk that is hedgeable and the risk that is not hedgeable in order to find the proper pricing for different types of games like this. Pretty interesting stuff.